In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the Pure Maths Paper 3, specifically Paper 3-1 from Cambridge A-Level exams from 2024. If you're looking for any other question from this paper, you should find a playlist in the description below. And if you're looking for any other paper, look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But of course, this isn't the classroom, we're on YouTube, so go ahead and take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, watch at 2x speed, whatever you find useful. If you find any of my videos useful, uh, I would appreciate like, subscribe, or sharing it with someone else doing the A-level exams. In question four, we're given a complex number u. It's minus one minus uh, square root of three times i. And we're asked to express this, not in this form, but to make it look like something or multiplied by cosine some angle, theta, uh, plus i sine some angle. Um, oh, that, that's it then. So this is a, quite a common thing to do. This is called polar form. It's uh, really good at visualizing um, um, the functions or it's, it's especially good when things are moving in circular motion. Used, used lots in, in college and stuff. Uh, so how do we change this into this? I, I find it helpful to draw it. Now you don't have to draw it. You, when you get good, you, um, you do the same thing over and over. You'll just remember how to do it. So, uh, certain squares of this, square root of these two squared added together, we get you the or. Uh, the angle is got by the inverse tangent of these two numbers divided. But I'll explain where all that comes from in a picture. Won't take that much longer. And if you're watching this, you probably need a little extra help. Um, so let's just draw this picture. Minus one on the x-axis, somewhere here, just roughly. Uh, minus square root of three, that's a bit more than one, so we'll just go down a little bit down here. That's this point u. This is the same point we want to draw, so it won't move. The point won't go anywhere. But we think of this point as over and down or down and out. That's how we think at this point. How we think of this one is more like this line here. It's the length of this line and the angle, um, the, either the angle here or the angle out here. Um, this question specifically asks for the angle to be less than 180 plus or minus. So we'd have to, they don't want the top one here. We'd have to use this one here. So this minus angle in here, this angle in here. So that's really what we're looking for. That's how you, that's how you tell someone where a complex number is. So here I told you it's a minus one, left one, down, square root three. That's how I tell you where this is. How I tell you where this one is, it's, well, it has a, it has a radius, we'll find out, and has an angle. That's, that's all this is telling us. Very, both very useful. They're both telling us two things. Left and left, right, up, down. Um, length and angle. The two things will find any point in two dimensional space. Okay, how do we find this? And um, if we draw this again as a triangle, uh, let's see. I know this length here, this is going minus one. So that was just a length of one. Uh, we went down minus square root of three. So just a length of square root of three. We just want to find this, this is or. This length here is or. And it's just Pythagoras theorem. So it's a triangle triangle. R squared is equal to square root of three squared plus one squared. Um, R is equal to square root of four. R is equal to two. That's it, you've got a mark there already. They want to know what R is. R is square root of two. They, then, they also want to know what this angle in here is. Um, so if we find this angle first, it should be easy. Just take it away from 180. So you can find this angle, use uh, cosine, sine, tangent, because you know all these numbers now, that's two. But usually you only know these two first. So we usually use tangent, uh, the tangent of, call this angle whatever you want. Uh, the tangent in there is equal to, let's see, opposite over adjacent, square root of three divided by one. Uh, solve for that, we get uh, the inverse tangent of a square root of three. That's a just double check my notes there. Uh, that would tell us it's pi over three. That's that angle in there. So what's this angle here? It's um, this theta is equal to pi minus pi over three, which is, uh, let's say two over three pi. But that's not how we write it. 
because it's going the minus direction we we, we like to tell you the direction of our angles in this. So 2 over 3 pi would actually be, let me jot it in, it would be uh, this angle here. Um, whereas, oh sorry, no, it would be this angle here. Uh, we want the minus one, so that's why we'll, we'll just, yeah, maybe I'll just put a little prime on this or something, prime. Um, so t the actual theta is minus 2 over 3. Don't worry if you just change it. The examiner won't mind that at all. Um, figuring it out that this angle here is 2 over 3 is fine. And then just using minus 2 over 3. It's perfectly okay. Um, and that's it. I think uh, they asked you to write it out. So let's write it out. This is equal to... I'm writing this line here. Or is 2. Multiply by cosine minus 2 over 3. Pi. Uh, plus i sine minus 2 over 3 pi and that's it that's a uh, that's the identical to this it's just a little easier to do certain things with it which we'll actually see in part b i'll clean this off and uh, make room for it okay in part b they give us another complex number this time they they give it to us in this um polar form um i'll read it out there and they simply ask us so this second one's v the first one was u they ask us to get v divided by u that's it. But they want us to put our answer in the form of um, or e to the power of i some angle theta. Um, where or is bigger than zero and theta is between plus and minus uh, pi. Okay, how do we do this? Uh, we're missing one bit of information here. You have to remember it, unfortunately. Uh, they don't give it to you. I, I'm fairly sure they don't give it to you in the in the list of formulas, the Moivre's theorem. And the Moivre's theorem tells us something that looks like this um, also equals to, uh, let me just double check my notes here, also equals to or, so that's the or out front, times e to the power of i, yes, it's just the same angle, isn't it? Uh, yeah, whatever angle is in here. So that's uh, the Moivre's theorem. So basically you can write a, a question like this, like this, or, let me change the or out to be two and change the theta out to be minus two over three pi. pi. So the Moivre's theorem says these are all the same. You can use any of them you want. Um, so when they want you to divide these two together, let's change them both into this form. Change this one into it. It just becomes five out front, e to the power of i. Sorry, let's put a bracket around that just so it's clear i multiplied by pi over 6. Okay, difficult to divide these two. It's, although we learn how to do it, it's difficult to divide um, complex numbers written in, uh, in is a scalar form? I, I can't remember what form it's called. <laughs> written in that form. But dividing these is actually quite easy. We'll do it right away now. Let's uh, put it here. v divided by u equals, uh, let's see, v is the bottom one here. That's uh, 5 e i over um, pi over 6 divided by 2 e to the i uh, multiplied by minus this one 2 over 3 pi okay a, a few things to do with here let's see 5 divided by 2 is easy let's just put that out front 5 over 2 and um, two things dividing that have this that have the same base so these are two uh, exponential fun exponential power um, terms that have the same base. We can do lots of things with that. First of all, this minus on the bottom row. Uh, let's write the top one again. e to the power of i pi over 6. Um, this minus just means it can come up to the top without the minus. i 2 to the power of 3 pi. That's, that's fine. That's just minus just moved it up. Um, the same base multiplying each other. It's just like these two adding each other. So let's uh, clean that up here. That's five over two e to the power of pi over six plus this one i two over three pi. These have oh sorry yeah these both have a pi in them both have i in them. So really we're just adding one over six plus two over three. Let's change that to four over six two over three four over six same thing. So really we just have one over six plus four over six. So the final answer is just 5 over 2, e to the power of i, 5 over 6, pi. 
that's it that that's the form they wanted they wanted it um an or a number five over two uh e to the power of i e to the power of i and some angle five over six pies and what's great is they didn't ask this by the way but what's great is once we have this we can now uh, go back to this quite easily it's just that's or five over two two and a half we get the or the angle is five over six get to that and we can even go back to this by just putting in the calculator and I can even draw it quite quickly two over this is an angle five over six which is a uh, five six somewhere over here and uh, the length five over two is just two and a half get a get a uh, compass let's say go to two and a half and swing it up boom that's the point there of these two divided by each other we get that point anyway they didn't ask for that extra this was a full mark. Let me just check this is the right answer. Five over six, yeah, five over two. Okay, uh, if you have any follow-up questions or see anything I did wrong, let me know, I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, have a good day.